Okay, today basically what I'm doing is I'm going through the tools that I have uh, and I'm setting tool offsets. Uh, what I've chosen to do on this picker machine is do what's called a, uh, a positive offset. And it's basically off of this gauge line, which is basically, and I'm not being exact here, uh, and it doesn't really matter if you are unless you're using a presetter. But basically you want to end up with two reference points, and there's two reference points I want to use the face of the spindle, which I'm going to use as my gauge line. Uh, that is not typically, if you've got multiple machines, that's typically not actually the gauge line. The gauge line is a certain diameter of the taper. Uh, you can look those up online. Uh, that's what the tool setters are going to do. They're going to let you set the tool down in there. And it's only going to slide down so far and uh, stop it at that gauge line every time, which is the same thing your spindle's going to do. Uh, but for the home shop or just a single machine owner, uh, you can use the spindle face with no problems because basically what we're looking for is two reference points on the machine that don't change. One being the spindle face and the other being the table. And basically what I've got set up here is a, uh, a hot gauge, uh, you know, just a cheap one off of eBay. Uh, they work well for these pur this purpose. Uh, a couple of one, two, three blocks. And that's mainly because I can't get my spindle down far enough to actually get a measure. Um, and basically what I'm looking for is we're wanting a positive measurement of the distance between the table, the flat surface here of the table, and this imaginary gauge line, which in our case is a spindle. So what is the length of that sticking out of the spindle basically is what we're looking at. And that's going down to the table. And that's what I'm going to enter as my tool offset. When I set up work offsets, uh, I won't have to reset the tools. I'll, I'll be able to do the tools once. If I do change a bit or something changes about the tool holder, I'll need to redo it. But otherwise, uh, I can stick with this method. Uh, there's a really quick way you can check this too. If you look at your machine, and actually enable the tool offsets after you've done this. Um, you should be able to zero out, zero it out on the table. Okay, so I've got all of the uh, test stuff off of there. I'm going to be real careful. I'm going to run a program. And basically, I've lined up the work started, kind of right here where this um, this old vice used to be. I'm pretty high up off the table, uh, so we should see the program run, and it's going to run up pretty high. Basically what you want to do when you're doing this is uh, my particular machine, uh, you know, generally a machine will have a rapid override, you want to set that really low. You basically set your feed rate down. Uh, you can slow your spindle down, you're just cutting air. Uh, and that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to be ready to stop the machine. Uh, I'm going to go into single block mode. And once it, it kind of gets settled and I see where the Z is going to end up, I'll, I'll probably let it run at almost full speed. Basically what that was, I actually uh, I just kind of spun the wheel while I was in handle mode and got the uh, z-axis too far up where it actually was past the, the first limit switch and it caused an alarm and it won't start a program if it's in alarm. So basically I just moved the z back down a little bit so I could get started. That's about where I programmed it. Uh, it's pretty much in line, so just visually checking it just to make sure it's it looks correct. Go ahead and speed everything up. And basically, it's doing an adaptive operation right now.
It may, it may be all the way to the console. Air compressors are great. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I think it's, it should be correct. Uh, I'll need to basically check it. It could be off by just a little bit. You don't want to crack the table. Uh, but that looks pretty close. And that's how I uh, have chosen to set this machine up. Uh, and basically it's a positive offset. There's pros and cons you can look online. Uh, I think several people uh, have kind of explained it, but I never really saw a video where it actually showed you what you were doing. Uh, the important thing is, is you're basically, if, you, if you're referencing the table, you're referencing that tool. And I'll show you kind of how I do it step by step. And the first thing that you want is you want to take a spindle measure. Now the way that I got that, basically set some one, two, threes, or whatever you've got, whatever you, that you can get your height gauge. Um, and I do recommend you buying this. Uh, even since I've had this machine, I've broken at least one end mill. Uh, trying to use the paper method, it's just not worth it. Uh, these are really inexpensive, um, so pick one up. Basically what you're doing you want to be real careful with the uh, the dogs that stick out on the bottom of the spindle. Make sure they don't get in the way or, or hit the uh, hive gauge. Yeah, that spindle column can just crush a, a test tool. So you want to be really careful. Okay, um, basically what I've got is I've got a known height. Uh, this is going to be, uh, the height gauge is, um, the height gauge is going to be a set amount. Uh, you need to look on your spec sheet. Uh, and then I'm using one, two, three blocks. So it's an easy calculation of how high that is actually sitting off the table. Um, right now, the, uh, spindle head is on the uh, height gauge and I'm just going to easily jog this down like I said always make sure that you're clear unless you just want to shoot all that out towards you <laughs> Okay, and that's dead zero. The way these uh, the way these gauges work is they have a small gauge which has a zero on it, and you want to basically get that close to that zero, and then as it rolls back around to zero, that's your fine measurement. Um, so what I would do now is I would look at my position screen on the FANU control, and you're looking for the machine coordinate. Write that down, uh, and then basically do the same thing. Uh, it's easiest to keep the same setup, put your tool in and measure it. So we're going to do that now. Same thing goes here. Basically what you want to do is move the tool down.
and zero the tool in. And basically, you want to look at the machine coordinate, see how much it changed, and that will give you the height of the end of the tool tip up to your gauge line. And that's how you can set your positive uh, tool offsets. Okay, so what I've done on my particular machine is I've done a program, and I'm kind of going to go over some of it because I haven't seen a lot on this OM control. So if you've never used one, uh, maybe this will help you kind of figure out the navigation and how to get there. You know, but basically what you want to do is you want to go over to edit because we want to load a program. To load a program, you got to be in edit mode. Um, if you're on another screen, like let's say we're on the offset screen and you to edit, you still have to hit the program button here to actually get it to pull up. And uh, reset in edit mode will take you to the top uh, and, and restart a program. That's how you restart a program if you need to. We're going to load my uh, tool change program. And basically that, that is uh, all zeros. So what we want to do is type in uh, zero, or sorry, O, zero, 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 zero. And you basically want to hit the down cursor and that'll load our program. And this has got the tool change, and I'm going to go ahead and run this, make sure everything's clear. Uh, and what you've got to do is switch back to auto when you want to run the program. The cursor will be hopefully up at the name of your program, which is 0000. Okay, the machine's changing tools now. And it's loading tool number four. And now it's loading tool number seven and one. Um, the main reason why I have these particular tools in this program, and I change them at will, and I'll kind of show you how I go through and change them, is uh, one of the tools is an edge finder. Uh, so that's what I use to set up work offsets and that kind of thing. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll manipulate these however I need to manipulate uh, to actually get tools in the machine a little bit easier and quicker. Okay, the way that I edit it is you go back to edit mode and you scroll down with the cursor key to let's say this is tool 4. Uh, and basically what you want to do is just get on that line and let's say we want to load tool 5, which is the tool that we had in there before, the big uh, big inch and an eighth in there. Um, basically, you type in tool 5 here, uh, and hit input, oh, sorry. Uh, cancel will delete, so we'll do tool 5, and you want to do an alter. And that'll immediately change it there. And basically, if we hit reset, We'll scroll back to the top of the program. We can go to auto, and now it's going to load tool five for us. And there we go. Uh, that's basic navigation. As far as uh, offset menus and stuff like that, I'll kind of go over that just real briefly. Uh, it's right here, menu offset. Um, and this particular one is your work offset and your tool offset is underneath here. The way that you enter in tool offsets is you scroll to the tool offset you want to change, type in the number uh, and hit input. So here in number six I'm going to do an offset of five and I'm going to hit input and it actually changes it. So the, the confusing thing about the Fanuc is it has a lot of different ways of uh, data entry. It's not always the same depending on what screen you're on. So it takes a little while to get used to it. Um, and the, the work offset is completely different. Basically you scroll to like if you want to set your G54 offset, you would go to G54. I'm going to go to my G55. And basically the way you set it is you scroll to the number which in this case G55 is offset number two on the machine. So the way that you change it is you have to hit the axis key first, which is X. I want to change the X axis. And then you type in a value of what you want to change it to. In this case, I'm changing it to zero. Uh, and then 
you can get input. It's a little bit different uh, model. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea, I'm going to go back to this program screen by hitting program. And if you will actually hit the lob, it'll actually show you your library list. So if you forget a program's name or what have you, it'll also put uh, comments out there. Um, and I found that works fine from Fusion 360 or any other CAM package that you put a, a, a program comment in on, on as to what it is. It'll actually show up in the screen, uh, tell you how much memory and stuff you have free. So basically the way I load this, this is normally on the side of the machine. And what I'm gonna do is just select USB, Oh, no USB. Um, we're going to just grab something off the memory. Okay. So, like, if I wanted to send this file up to the machine, uh, basically what I would do is I go back to program and I I would hit set or function and then set up to send. And this will this DNC controller will sit there and wait to send data. So it'll be sitting on the side. Uh, and then what you would do is you would, after you get in this IO menu, you just hit the read button. And this will actually send the program down and you can use it. Um, you can also drip feed from this controller. Uh, it works just fine. Um, I'm not really sure about 3D contours and stuff like that if you're going really fast. I have this set at 4800 ball. I think this controller will do maybe 9600, so you may be able to double that speed. Sometime, I'm hoping tomorrow to get some of the coolant stuff in, and if that happens, I can actually start machining. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be machining a lot of aluminum enclosures, and I really can't do that without a lot of coolant. Um, but I hope uh, either Friday or early next week to get some of that stuff in. And get the rest of this put on and you know, get, it, get it in full operation. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop me a line. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching the videos. Uh, I got several messages on the machine about folks that were considering buying a used machine or a new machine. Uh, by all means, if you, if you have a machine shop and you're, you know, you have the, the way of uh, uh, paying for that machine, uh, by all means, go buy new. Uh, but don't be scared of an older machine. The biggest problem that I've seen people, you know, afraid of the machine, and it, it is pretty difficult, is the older controls and the, and the mystery back there in the electrical box. But if you'll just go through the ladder diagrams, uh, make sure that it has documentation, or that you can get documentation for it, and uh, just go through those, and you can pretty much figure out anything. And it's all kind of standard components. Uh, most of the Fanuc stuff, um, I can pretty much buy any part uh, that's on it, the servo drives. Uh, they have an LCD replacement for this. Uh, I have a, a, key, uh, a, a key sheet. I actually ordered it for this to replace this. Um, you can get this new key sheet. Uh, all this stuff here is pretty standard um, if you had to replace it. Um, and in the back, you know, you're talking about relays and fan hoop boards uh, and some timers. Uh, just not anything you know outside the scope of you know if you got just a little bit of electrical knowledge uh, it's just that there's a lot of it and you have to go through it anyway hope you like the videos and I uh, hope to get another one put out here soon thanks for watching